So I want to talk about instantaneous center of zero velocity today. Uh, it's a topic that many of you will see. I have mixed feelings about it, except in very, very particular cases. Uh, and uh, my biases will be very apparent as you go through this lecture. I'm going to talk about a couple specific cases here. Uh, and in particular, I'm going to look at uh, two examples that I think you can use instantaneous centers with, but one, both of which would be probably better to use another approach. Uh, the first one's a lot more straightforward than the second, but I've chosen sort of complex cases. Uh, and I'll sort of say at the beginning, I think that really the main case that you're ever going to look at is one where you say have a beam coming down and it's moving down in this direction, in this direction, and you can define sort of an IC this way. Try these on your own. These are, these are problems that during a lecture and when you've written all of the equations out tend to be straightforward. And if you spend the time to sort of look at these, I think you'll find it's helpful to sort of understand the complexity of the approach and how to visualize them. So I have an angular link. Uh, it's got a omega AB, omega AB is right here, uh, which is given as four rads per second. Now I haven't put in my coordinate system on this slide right here yet, but I have X, I have Y, and I have positive as counterclockwise. So this is a positive motion. You're asked to find the velocity of the collar at C and the angular velocity of the link BC, which is, so you have C, which is the slider, and BC, which is here. Uh, at the instant shown, CB is horizontal, and you're given a couple other things. So A is equal to 500 millimeters, B is equal to 350 millimeters, theta over here is 60 degrees, and phi is 45 degrees. Uh, that's it. So what I have to do here is I have to solve through for uh, velocities at various points. Now, one of the things that I know about, uh, about the system is that I have a velocity at B, which is given by the red line. And if I look over here, that's velocity of B. I have velocity of C. Now I know the directions of both of these because I know the directions of the of the link on the other side. So if I do that, I can define that drop two perpendiculars from there. And you can see here I've defined the length C and D. Now for this system to work or for this idea to work, this instantaneous center has to have everything rotating instantaneously doesn't matter what happens next, but just at this instant about this IC right here. So velocity of B, I've already know is omega AB times A. That's, that's given by just uh, looking at the link AB. But omega BC, which is the rotation, the angular rotation of that link is VB divided by C. So VC equals omega uh, BC div, uh, times D. And I get this velocity right here. So I get the magnitude of it right away. I know the direction because I know sort of what's happening. Velocity of B then is equal to two meters per second. Omega BC is equal to 7.81 rads per second. And velocity of C is equal to 2.45 meters per second. When I present it this way, it's really easy. The geometry is complex. And solving for this geometry, I think, it becomes very, very complex in terms of trying to look at different systems. You can do that with a sine law. So D, C, B, uh, D over sine D, B over sine B, C over sine B. And if you do all of the sort of uh, relationships and you have phi and theta, you get this relationship here. And so you can use all of that to calculate the distance of C, the distance of D. Sorry, and I should have not jumped into the, the answer to this problem. I should have told you this is how I got these numbers. So once I have all of that, I, I have uh, direction, I have uh, the, the distances, then over here I can solve for this. 
and I also know the direction. So I can look at that and say, well, you know, it's going to rotate about C and it's going to rotate in a counterclockwise direction, which is positive. On the other hand, I could do it a different way. And a different way just means solving for it uh, in terms of uh, distances. So if I look at this component right here, I have Rx and I have Ry. I'm not doing this because I'm going to overstep on some of the other uh, components. But if I do that, my vector becomes A cos theta, A sine theta, and zero because there's no uh, component of position in the z direction. Good thing I wrote my coordinate system here, so x is positive uh, uh, to the right, y is positive upwards, and counterclockwise by the right-hand rule is positive. Omega AB, which was given to me, is 0, 0, 4, so that's I, J, K. Same thing over here, I, J, K. I have velocity of b, which I can then calculate by doing the cross product of omega cross rab, and I get rad 3 minus rad 3 meters per second, and I get uh, 1 meter per second, 0 meters per second. So again, i, j, k. And it kind of makes sense. It's going in this direction and it's going upward. So the signs make sense and the sign follows the convention, which is one of the advantages of using this type of approach. Vector approaches, as long as you consistently hold to uh, standard sort of notation, you will get the right uh, magnitude and direction. You have a magnitude VB of two meters per second. You can solve for the remaining terms, VC equals VB plus VC relative to B. VCX is VBX, VCB relative to X, VCY, VBY plus VCB relative to Y. Again, coordinate system is important, and I can just sort of say VCBX is just going to be minus RCBY with omega BC, which equals zero. Uh, and why is that? Because the at that at that instant uh, the the link BC is horizontal, and so VCX is equal to VC cos phi, which is minus 2.45 meters per second. And omega BC, I can solve through as the correction for VBY, and so that ends up being uh, 7.81 uh, meters per second, or rads per second, excuse me. So it doesn't necessarily look a lot easier but it is actually there uh, and you have the right directions and you have everything sort of appear from this both ways are valid uh, they better be they get the same result uh, the geometry and the risk of error is again it's a it's a personal opinion and you may like instantaneous centers and the geometry much better I don't uh, is much greater for me with ICs instantaneous centers Vector approaches requires you to draw the solution. In fact, in, in MIE 100 and dynamics, you really should. But when you do this, you often will see where your problems are. So going back a little bit, when I looked at the velocity of B, velocity of C, it kind of made sense and I kind of could see where everything was going. This is a much more complex case. So I have a mechanism consisting of a driving piston, which is at A, three members and a riveter which is attached to slider block d determine the velocity d at the instant shown when the piston at a is traveling at v sub a so you're given uh, r a c of 300 millimeters r b c of uh, 200 millimeters r c d of 150 millimeters velocity of a is given as 30 meters per second and you're getting theta equals 30 degrees 45 degrees 60 degrees and 45 degrees and i will now show you where all of those thetas are uh, which i should have done at the beginning theta 2 theta, theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 there you go uh, and all of those distances sort of on this crazy graph so there you go lots there and a lot of information this is why i use animation now what i expect to hap have happen is that as this thing, this slider moves down, this link BC will move up and to the left. And all of this will sort of be driven simultaneously 
because the slider at A is moving up and to the left. So if I use instantaneous centers, I end up with uh, various sort of directions. So I have velocity of D, I've got velocity at C, I can do all of the calculations. So I've got, uh, I better sort of start organizing things. Theta, alpha is theta is three minus theta two. I've got beta, which is 90 minus theta two plus theta one. Delta over here, which is uh, theta three minus theta four. Gamma, 180 minus alpha minus B, beta. And finally, epsilon, 180 minus theta four. Uh, minus delta. Okay, you can see that I really am not very excited about this particular approach. Uh, I can calculate all of the distances. I can then calculate using the sine law. From this, I can calculate RQC, RQTD, RQAD, Q2DC, all of this. I get omega AC, VC, v, omega CD, velocity of D, and finally velocity of D, which is equal to 10.6 meters per second. It's not a very satisfying problem. Uh, and uh, it's not uh, it's not the way I, it's not a problem that lends itself well to instantaneous centers, but it's one that now I can sort of look at uh, a slightly different case. And here I'm going to look at uh, the same thing vectorially. So I can say let's give the velocity we're given the velocity of a in the slot, and so it's given as minus 21 point or minus 21.21 minus or plus 221.21 j meters per second it goes from a to c and then uh, if i look at that it's going up and i kind of expect that that's the direction i will calculate uh, from all of these terms an omega ac and an omega bc because I have all of the, the linkage uh, arms. So I have velocity of A, which equals velocity of C plus velocity of A with respect to C. I have velocity of A with respect to C, which is uh, omega AC crossed with RA with respect to C. So there's the distances, all of those are there. Omega BC crossed with RBC. So if I put that in, I have that direction. Velocity of D equals velocity of C plus velocity of D relative to C. Velocity of D is equal to minus V dy because it is limited to move. Remember, it's that slider that's limited to move downward. Uh, velocity of D with respect to C is going to be omega CD cross with RDC. Omega CD is 236.6 rads per second. Velocity of D then is going to be minus 10.6 meters per second. So I have all of this and I can sort of draw that picture so the animations are not quite keeping up here. Okay, this is a, uh, the last one was kind of brutal. Uh, and it's brutal in, in the sense that if I looked at that particular problem from a perspective of instantaneous centers, I've got to get the triangles right. Once I get the triangles right, I've got to get all the angles right. And often for me, that's the hard part. However, if I do the vector approach, it's, it's really, it is a lot of bookkeeping, but it's not as bad for me as the instantaneous center. So yeah, the instantaneous center approach works great, and, but whoa, it really is kind of something to think about. On the other hand, the last problem takes a lot of time. And if you want to try it on your own, and I strongly, strongly recommend, this is one of the reasons why I kind of skipped over a lot of steps. I've given, given you all the answers. I've given you all the direction. Uh, but try and sort of use that as a basis to work through this problem. It's complex. But it's one that you right now are certainly capable of handling, and it's one that I kind of recommend that you do try. Thank you very much, and we will talk again.